Good day everybody and welcome back. This is just a quick video to answer an email I received. The gentleman's he's, he's in the thought of getting a 3D printer and he's wondering whether it's you know is it going to be beneficial in the workshop. So I've just ran around and grabbed up a few things that I've made. There's, there's plenty more. Um, just to, to show what what I've done to help you know with storage and whatever in you know, in my cupboards and drawer systems and that. Yeah, I'll just give you a run through of what I've what I've made. Um, everything I've made here on the table, um, I've made off Fusion 360. I've just got the hobby version. It costs nothing. There's heaps of tutorials on the internet, on YouTube, on how to drive uh, Fusion. Um, I used... For me, when I first got it, I had no idea how even, you know, how it even worked. So I used um, DCT, the Design Creativity and Technology Channel. Um, you'd all know him as Aaron from Aaron Engineering. He's got two channels. He's got tutorials. He's a he's a teacher of fusion. So he's done these videos where you can go step by step. So I just watch it on the tablet play and pause and then draw it on the computer so yeah you just do it step by step he teaches it from ground up which that's how I've learned to to make what I've made so yeah I'll try and link Aaron's DCT channel in the description so if you want to hunt through his playlist you'll see the fusion tutorials in there I'd be lost without a 3d printer now like when I get something I just print a box for it, if I make something I print a box for it, store it away. You know, Dane Tree it's written on top, planer gauges, MT3 tool post holder. You know, just they're just easy. Anyway, I'll give you a look at what's what I've done and how I've made them and that should answer old mate's question. And yeah, it might give you inspiration to yeah to grab a printer. Like all these are done on an Ender 3 V2 Neo. It's only a little printer. Nothing fancy. I'd love to have a big enclosed one where I can do different filaments. Yeah, it's it's on the wish list, but yeah, whether I ever get one or not. But anyway, we'll have a look see how I've made these. Just for starters, these little jiggers here to organise your spanners. These I found on Thingiverse. Um, I didn't design these ones. Found them on Thingiverse. You just count up how many spanners in that one set you got, and there's all different types on there. Like how many spanners they'll hold, and you just print out the appropriate one. But instead of this all being just a pile of spanners unorganized, it's it's organized now. Same down here. And if one's missing, you know, if one's gone you know it's missing so that's been a bit of a game changer just that on its own so when I put the VFD on this mill I could remote mount the, the screen so that's the original uh, forward reverse which went so I just printed up a case uh, it's in two pieces and the, the screen just clips in you can just pop that back out and yeah it's at the front of the mill it's easy to get to you can adjust your speed, it needs a good clean, but yeah, it's not way back there on the VFD. Right, hey, I've got a drawer full of these little boxes um, just for holding end mills 6mm, 5mm, 8mm. Um, got them all for metric and imperial. <clears throat> Game changer. You're not, you know, you're not looking around trying to find that one size you're in that box you know what you got big end mills set them all clanging together in a drawer or laying down flat knocking up against each other just printed a simple tray with a few holes and yeah it just keeps them separated they don't get knocked around only when I use them they get knocked around planer gauges as you can see not all prints are perfect the one did lift on the corner, but it's still functional. Slide the top open. 
got your planer gauge and I just went to the craft store and got some of that thin I don't know what you call it, it's like a felty type stuff and just yeah stuck it in there yeah it, it, it works keeps everything nice and protected and believe it or not <clears throat> like I just I just get the WD can of WD-40 and spray them it doesn't hurt the plastic and nothing ever rusts you don't get no condensation or moisture it's a great system it's written on top what they are so when you open your drawer you know what you're looking at which is <laughs> it's handy this little tray here I did yeah I actually found this little tray thing on Thingiverse and bags of ball bearings instead of having just a laying in a drawer just printed this little set of drawers out so five mil six seven and eight mil ball bearings and that's just a mixture of all different sizes and it's it's neat it's tidy it's yeah it's all packed away this beautiful day and train live center So I just drew that up in Fusion and printed it out and I just got some of that felt stuff. You can see the WD-40 in the bottom there. Just laid it in and I think I used a bit of super glue on the side buns. And just yeah, a couple of dobs here and there and yeah, it's nice and neat. It's not going to get knocked around in the drawer. Works really, really well. But the only thing is I put the I normally make everything slide <clears throat> to the right. This would, if you turned it around, but then the name's the wrong way around. There's a bit of OCD coming out in me there. Just little stones, just a simple tray, slide and lid. Got stones written on the front, should have been on the lid, but I'm just trying out something different. But they're all in one spot. You're not you're not hunting around for them. precision ground flat stone, same thing. They need a good clean, but just got a felt that felt lining stuff in it. Morse tape of three tool holder. Simple box, got a bit of a step inside to take up for this step, so it sits flat in there. It doesn't want to rock around. Works with works a treat. <laughs> Trays for holding your boxes of inserts. I've got another one of these on the printer at the moment printing because yeah, you know, ran out of spaces. But it, you, they just live under the lathe, and you can yeah, you just pull them out, sit them on the table. You know which one you want. Just pull them out. Not a lot there. That's, they're 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 a brilliant idea. inch boring head so the three inch boring head it's just got a rock a rectangle printed into the bottom that it's a fraction bigger than the actual piece on the boring head so you just put in and spin it around drops down doesn't move screw the lid back on It's out of the way, it just lays in the drawer like that. Doesn't do any damage. Same with the two inch one. Yeah, probably, <laughs> as you can see it ran out of filament as it was going, so I just changed over, which went to a different colour. It doesn't matter, it's just laying in the drawer. That's the same sort of setup. It's got a bit more movement in that one, but Still does a job. 3D printer does the threads perfect. And you shred the lid back on and job's done. Set of letter drills. And it's just got the um, the letters printed into the top, so if you want a letter J, there it is. They're not overly tight, I sort of went a bit wild on the tolerances. But yeah, does the job. The 
optical center finder. This is a snug fit. Probably made this a bit too tight. But doesn't rattle around. Bloody good thing. And the um, edge finder. Just sits in there like that, nice and neat. So when I'm using it on the mill, I just go to the drawer, grab the whole lot out, and just pick it up out of the drawer. It doesn't fall out. I put little slots in there and little tabs on the inside so when it slides down, it just locks in. Works good. You can just pull it out and it doesn't want to fall everywhere. You don't need to be a genius on fusion to draw these up because if I can do it, anyone can. It's just practice. Yeah, it doesn't have to look a million bucks. It just makes makes your, your storage in your workshop <laughs> so much more pleasant. Like I was saying about the, you know, for the, all the end mills, there's all your imperial and all your metric. They're just, it's nice and neat. You know, it's not all over the place and you've not got them in little boxes here, there and everywhere. It's, it's organised. Same with this drawer. Like centre drills, thread gear, all odds and ends, taps, spiral flute taps. It's just neat and tidy. So even the reams have got their own box. So these are all spiral, in, like all imperial taps. So you know, they're all in their separate sizes. So it's just organised, it's just easy. Well, mate, I hope that answers your question and it just gives you a couple of ideas of what you can can do with one. Like, it doesn't just end here in the in the workshop either, like in the house. Little things like um, the missus has got one of them Apple watches and it's got a little round disc charging magnetic thing on the arse of it, on the back of it, that you've got to clip on. So just found this little device on Thingiverse. You just, it holds a little charger button thing and just recess it in there and it just sits on the computer desk and she just puts a watch on it I'll try and throw a photo in of it but there's endless what you can do with one so I reckon like I say every workshop should have one if the, the options are endless if you can think it you can draw it you can print it that's what I'll come up with <laughs> that's my motto with it anyway anyway check out the description and hopefully I've managed to link Aaron's DCT channel in your description you can look through the playlist and find the, the tutorials on fusion he's um it's easy to follow and yeah it's really beneficial so thanks guys for watching and see you on the next one Hooray.